Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, Bible journaler here on YouTube, and I want to show you the Roman Catholic journaling Bible. I've had a lot of Roman Catholics ask, is there one? And yes, there is. It has the columns with the lines on it, like most Bibles have, but they've included the footnotes. And I like that a lot. I miss that in my regular journaling Bibles. And it has a few pages scattered throughout, not a ton, but a few pages with a beautifully lettered verse that you have a full page to do some art on. And you can see just flipping through it, there's notes on the bottoms of the pages. The intros to the chapters have a little more space. Sometimes there's a little intro giving you context for the, the chapter and that kind of thing. But it has those notes. And I really like that about this. Everything else about the Bible is pretty much the same as other journaling Bibles. So it's still World Watercolor Month, and I am still working through the prompts. These are the ones. If you want to pick up that graphic, you can go to the link in the description down below and join in anytime. So this was for the word light, and I was just thinking of a time that I was in a, a church in Rome and had this big dome ahead and uh, overhead, and I just thought it would be really cool if you could actually see the stars through it. So I drew it in my Bible instead. This one was for the prompt clear, and I was thinking water. Water is clear and dew is clear. So this verse about, you know, tell me who has begotten the drops of dew. Not us. That would be God. This uh, particular one was for the word row, and I went for a whole bunch of ladybugs who were in a row on the right path. Here we have the prayer closet, and I forgot to put a do not disturb sign, which I thought would be really cute on there, so I glued a piece of paper on to add it on there. But I love that it has the crack of light coming through the closed prayer closet with just a little light filtering out, my prayers filtering out beyond that door. And of course, a lion for strength, because I love to paint lions. <laughs> There's just a thing I have for lions, so there you go. So I am going to do a background, because the word for today is pattern. So I thought I would do a really super simple pattern type of thing. We're going to do something that's going to look like a quilt. I shouldn't say we because I'm doing it. <laughs> kind of makes me crazy when people say we and they are doing it themselves. So I am going to use three colors. I'm going to use the primary colors of yellow, red, and blue. If you want to try something like this, then go ahead and use any colors you want. You can do them in analogous colors. You could do all different shades of purple and do it on a royal page and make something like that. Lots of different ways you can do this, but I'm going to do the basic colors because when I overlay red, yellow, and blue on each other, then I end up with a little different color in between. So where red and yellow may cross, I'll have a little orange. Where the green shows up is where the blue and the yellow have crossed, etc. So it's kind of a fun way to play with colors see what mixes and that sort of thing. And I'm doing really light layers. Notice I'm using flat brushes. There's uh, one brush that I'm using that's like a one inch brush and one is a one and a half inch. It's an opportunity to use your square brushes. You don't have to buy fancy square brushes. Your kids probably have them because in a lot of kids watercolor sets they give you brushes like that. I have some fancy ones but not required. And it's one of the few times that I would actually use square brushes. I don't use them very often except for like big washy backgrounds sometimes. So for a pattern like this, it's really helpful to have a square brush just to make all these different quilt squares. I'm also not measuring them. I'm not, I didn't put lines down. I'm just making squares, all over, squares and rectangles all over the place and letting it be kind of playful and random. And in between, when it gets kind of too wet and things are too mushy, because there were some that were bleeding together so much, I just stopped, I put a piece of paper over top of it and ironed it. And one of the things that you may have noticed that I did was I did some dabbing, because you can see where some of the paint starts to puddle. If you put a piece of paper over top of puddled paint, it will splooge. <laughs> so I didn't want it to splooge, so I just took a barely damp, Baby, baby wipe, or you could take a paper towel and just dab off a little of that so that it doesn't splooge when you start doing your ironing. But just a couple seconds with a hot iron works pretty well. And then after, it, after it's mostly dry and mostly flat, sometimes I'll even run the iron over the pages themselves. But speaking of the pages, the paper is the same as pretty much every other Bible paper. It always gets a little bit wrinkly when you add watercolor to it, so it'll never get completely flat, even with the ironing. But that's just how Bible paper is, because it's water and paper. 
and those two aren't really meant to be together so that's one of the reasons why I try to use light colorings of watercolor so that I don't end up with too much soppy wet watercolor. To make the quilting I just used a gel pen and using a white gel pen kept it all very light and I could even add some of the gel pen on this side that had all of the text on it, the scripture text on the right, and just have a little bit of it so it's a hint at the quilting without having to put it over top of all those letters. Now, if you do a dark color, it's gonna be a little more visually distracting and I wanted it to be really soft and pretty. So that's why I went with white, but you can also do that. Watercolor does not bleed through for the most part. There are a few brands that do, so always test out your watercolors on one of the pages in the back or something to make sure it doesn't go through. Sometimes a darker, richer color will go through when other colors wouldn't. So there we go. That's the quick video for today. If you're interested in that Catholic journaling Bible, there's a link to it in the description, as well as the Facebook group so you can come and join us and do that daily challenge for this month. And I will see you guys next time. Have a really wonderful week. God bless you. Bye-bye.